Once upon a time, during a hot summer, there was a large house where a beautiful girl named Chu Xiao slept in her room. Unbeknownst to her, her cousin entered and forcefully struck her head while shouting, What a disgrace! You bring shame upon the Bai family! Chu Xiao was confused and asked, Where am I? Her cousin with a smirk replied, You dare to ask? Look at what you've done! Chu Xiao looked at her bed and saw her undergarments scattered on it. She had slept naked the entire night, which shocked her as she had no memory of it. Her cousin sneered, Remember last night? Well, don't worry, the old mistress will be here soon. If she sees you like this, she'll ensure you have no standing in the Bai family. Can you imagine the embarrassment? Chu Xiao realized her wicked cousin had planned this to harm her reputation. She exclaimed, It's because of you! You plotted against me! Her cousin laughed and jeered, Exactly! Ha ha! What can you do? Do you think the old mistress will believe you after seeing this? Or will she believe me? Just then, the door slammed open, and Chu Xiao's grandmother, the old mistress, entered the room. She scolded Chu's cousin, saying, Bai Ruo Wei, what have you done? Do you really think I'll trust you? Ruo Wei stammered, and the grandmother ordered her to leave the house, angry and disappointed. The grandmother then noticed Chu Xiao's state and slapped her face hard. Chu Xiao tried to explain, tears streaming down her face. Grandma, I was framed by her but her grandmother refused to listen and demanded that she leave the house to avoid further embarrassment for the Bai family. Chu Xiao cried for a while, then started packing her belongings. As she left the house with her luggage, she looked back and whispered to herself, one day I'll return. With determination, she moved forward. She went to the airport, boarded a plane, and traveled abroad. Her grandmother hoped that Chu Xiao would eventually understand her reasons. Four years later, Chu Xiao returned from abroad with her luggage and a baby who was nearly three years old. As they waited at the airport, her aunt arrived and picked up the baby. The aunt asked Chu Xiao why she didn't come back with her when she had asked her to. Chu Xiao explained that she was occupied with unfinished work. While Chu Xiao conversed with her aunt, her mobile phone rang from an unknown number. She answered the call, and a lady's voice on the other end said, Bai Chu Xiao, I am Bai Ruo Wei. Chu Xiao was stunned, unable to respond as she realized it was her cousin who had caused her four years of exile. Ruo Wei continued, The old mistress wants to meet you. She wants to know about your current situation. Let's meet at our usual spot at 3 p.m. After their meeting was arranged, Chu Xiao went to a hotel to meet her cousin. As she entered her cousin's room, she found Ruo Wei sitting on a couch, wearing a blue outfit, with one leg crossed over, the other revealing her knee. She held a glass of wine and said to Chu Xiao, What's up? Don't you respect me? I'm your cousin. Say hello. Chu Xiao sat down on the couch in the same manner as Ruo Wei with her arms crossed and replied, Do you think you deserve respect? I wouldn't have been kicked out of my house if you hadn't framed me. Ruo Wei stood up and explained that what happened in the past was over, and she had already faced the consequences she deserved. Ruo Wei sat beside Chu Xiao and poured red wine into a glass while telling her that the old mistress had sent her to check on Chu Xiao. Chu Xiao couldn't believe it and asked, Really? Ruo Wei responded, Of course. Let's drink and discuss the details. As she handed Chu Xiao the glass of red wine, Chu Xiao pretended to take a sip, but she realized something was mixed in the wine. Ruo Wei thought Chu Xiao had fallen for her trick. In Chu Xiao's mind, she thought, Bai Ruo Wei, do you really think I would fall for your tricks again? She acted as if she felt dizzy, placed her hand on her head, and then passed out on the couch. Ruo Wei looked at her and remarked, She hasn't changed even after all these years. Ruo Wei carried Chu Xiao into a room and threw her onto the bed. President Jio, an old man who was waiting there, became excited upon seeing Chu Xiao. Ruo Wei told him, President Jio, this is the woman I have brought for you. President Jio couldn't take his eyes off Chu Xiao and exclaimed, Wei Wei, you really know how the game works. Don't worry, your dad's new project will face no problems. Ruo Wei thanked President Jio and said she would leave to avoid bothering him further. As President Jio prepared to lie down on the bed, intending to approach Chu Xiao, she suddenly regained consciousness and slapped him with all her might. 
Ruo Wei heard the loud sound of the slap, rushed back into the room, and saw Chu Xiao sitting there, eyes wide open, drenched in sweat. Shocked, Ruo Wei asked, You, you're not unconscious? Chu Xiao laughed sarcastically and said, Ha ha, bye, Ruo Wei. It's time for you to face the consequences. As she said that, she took out a test tube containing a drug and asked Ruo Wei, Is this the drug you put in my wine? Ruo Wei felt embarrassed and terrified at that moment. She pleaded for Chu Xiao's forgiveness, promising never to do such a thing again. Chu Xiao retorted, Oh, so when you framed me four years ago, did you ever think about forgiveness? Saying this, she opened Ruo Wei's mouth and put the drug inside. Ruo Wei collapsed on the floor, alongside President Jio, who was still stunned from Chu Xiao's slap. Chu Xiao left the room, feeling a little dizzy. As she walked out, a young man, tall and handsome, wearing a white shirt, suddenly appeared. He swiftly picked up Chu Xiao, preventing her from escaping, and placed her on his bed. Still confused, Chu Xiao tried to move away from him, shouting, Stay away from me! The young man commanded her to shut up as he leaned towards her and placed his lips on her neck. In that moment, Chu Xiao passed out. Chu Xiao awoke the next morning, finding herself naked in bed next to the boy from the previous night. She quickly covered herself with the blanket and searched for her clothes. Frustrated, she muttered, That scheming girl, Ruo Wei, must have planned this again. Anger boiled within Chu Xiao as she dressed in a hurry and stormed towards the room's exit, cursing Ruo Wei in her thoughts. Upon opening the door, Ruo Wei noticed another room nearby, and to her surprise, she saw Chu Xiao walking out of it. She was confused why was she still here. Perplexed, she entered the room from which Chu Xiao had emerged and found a messy scene with a tie, a white shirt, a watch, and pants scattered on the floor. In her mind, Ruo Wei thought, Bai Chu Xiao, I finally caught you doing this. I thought you had slept with someone. The young man woke up and looked at Ruo Wei, asking her as he dressed, Was it you last night? Ruo Wei realized he was Zhang Cheng Yu, the president of John's group, but he seemed to have no memory of the previous night. Seeing an opportunity, she replied, Yes, it was me. President Cheng Yu then informed her that his secretary, Dong Chuan, would discuss compensation with her later. At that moment, Dong Chuan, a young man with a brown coat and glasses, approached Ruo Wei. His innocent face made him appear more trustworthy as he introduced himself as President Zhang's secretary. Expressing gratitude for her assistance to President Zhang, he promised to fulfill all her needs as compensation, handing her his business card. Ruo Wei's mind raced as she looked at the card, filled with surprise. She realized she had formed a connection with Jiang Cheng Yu, a significant figure from the John's group. A smirk formed on her face as she thought, Bai Chu Xiao, just you wait. President Cheng entered his house, and upon his arrival, there was a fuss, as all the servants welcomed him. However, the atmosphere suddenly became silent when they heard a voice coming from a room. It was the voice of his daughter, expressing her frustration. You're all liars! Why isn't Daddy home yet? Curious, he entered her room and found his brother playing with his daughter. She was riding on her uncle's back, pretending he was a horse, and suggested they embark on a journey to find Daddy. As she glanced behind her, she spotted her father and joyfully leaped off her uncle's back, shouting, Daddy! His brother approached President Cheng, appearing tired, and said, Brother, if you had returned even a bit later, you wouldn't have been able to see your little brother again. His daughter came over and clung to President Cheng's leg. At nearly three years old, she said to him, Daddy, didn't you promise to tell Shue Er the story of Little Red Riding Hood? You broke your promise, and Shue Er felt so lonely. Cheng Yu lifted his daughter in his arms and apologized. I'm sorry, something urgent came up. Let's go. Daddy will tell you a story. Filled with excitement and a wide smile, she exclaimed, Yay, Shia Air loves Daddy the most. His brother thought to himself, Damn it, I didn't even get any consolation after a night of suffering. Chu Xiao arrived at her house, removed her heels, and thought, Great, Lin Ye is asleep. However, as her son approached and suddenly said, Stay right there, she was startled. Regaining her composure, she replied, Lin, Lin Ye, you're not sleeping? Her aunt chimed in, asking why Chu Xiao had come home late as she had. 
Mommy went to wait for some news. I'm a bit busy since I just came back. Come on, my baby, it's too late. You should go to bed. Lin Ye looked sad and with teary eyes, he said, you're lying. Your hand is swollen. Your clothes are messy. I'm sure you used karate on someone. Plus, you received a call from Bai Ruo Wei before you left. You've been tricked by her again. Lin Ye continued speaking, and to some extent, he was correct. Chu Xiao was stunned for a moment, but she maintained a composed expression and said, I never lie to you. However, her son persisted, saying, Mommy, haven't you forgotten why you were kicked out of the Bai family? How can you trust Bai Ruo Wei again? Chu Xiao explained to him that it wasn't the same situation, but rather some work-related matter. She assured him that she had Aunt Anne Ran and him by her side, and that made her happy enough. Lin Ye felt sad and didn't want his mommy to be bullied again. Chu Xiao reassured him, saying, Mommy is okay. Be good, Lin Ye, and now go to bed, okay? Otherwise, mommy will worry about your well-being. Lin Ye nodded sadly, and Chu Xiao guided him to bed, comforting him once more and assuring him that everything would be okay. She needed to have a conversation with her aunt, so he should sleep as it was already too late. With sleepy eyes, he replied, Yes, mommy, and closed his eyes, thinking, I wish I could grow up immediately and protect you, mommy, and then drifted to sleep. The next day, Chu Xiao was in a rush, hurrying to get to her workplace at Yuan Hang Media Company. It was her first day on the job there. As she hurried along, she unexpectedly ran into Ruo Wei on her way. Ruo Wei was accompanied by her assistant, who held an umbrella for her. Ruo Wei noticed Chu Xiao and remarked, Isn't that my little sister? Why are you in such a hurry? In her mind, Chu Xiao thought, Why am I so unlucky to encounter her here? She asked Ruo Wei, Are you here to provoke me? What do you want? Ruo Wei's assistant spoke up, saying, If you keep complaining, do you believe I won't ask the magazine department to fire you? Angered by this remark, Chu Xiao slapped the assistant's face hard and retorted, I'm talking to my sister. Are you deaf? Fire me? Fine, let's see if you can. She glared at her hand with anger. Ruo Wei ordered her assistant to step aside, and Chu Xiao commented, You can even be in a magazine. I don't know what they're thinking. Ruo Wei responded with a smirk. Now I'm the face of Shenlan Jewelry. Shenlan Jewelry was a prominent company. Chu Xiao was taken aback by this news, wondering if they were trying to get bankrupt by choosing Ruo Wei as the face of their company. However, Ruo Wei, trying to provoke her, whispered in her ear with a smile, Last night, President Zhuo gambled all his properties on you, didn't he? Ruo Wei maintained her composure and replied, No, now that I'm a public figure, I shouldn't argue with Bai Chu Xiao in public. With that, she moved to the other side with her assistant and told Chu Xiao to wait for what was to come. Chu Xiao remained confused as to why Shenlan Jewelry had hired Bai Ruo Wei, an infamous celebrity, as their representative. There had to be something suspicious about it. Finally, she arrived at her company's building and rushed to her office. She opened the door and apologized to everyone for being late, mentioning the discussion about the magazine that had taken place. She explained that she was experiencing jet lag and expressed her apologies. A brunette named Su Yao sarcastically commented, What a unique excuse! Chief Editor Liu informed Chu Xiao that it was just the beginning and instructed her to take a seat so they could continue the discussion. Chief Editor Liu shared that Bai Ruo Wei had signed with Shunxing Entertainment, a subsidiary of Jiang's group, and had become the face of Shenlan Jewelry. The brunette girl was shocked by this news, wondering how Ruo Wei had become so fortunate and rose to fame overnight. Chu Xiao, however, remained unfazed as she had already heard the news directly from Ruo Wei. Whispers filled the room as everyone began speculating that there must be some kind of relationship with someone in the higher management involved in this decision. Su Yao thought to herself, Bai Ruo Wei has the support of the Bai family, and Shunxing Entertainment has the backing of the Jiang family. I shouldn't mess with these powerful families. I should shift the responsibility to someone else. Editor Liu asked, who is willing to take it on? The room fell silent until the Su Yao spoke up, addressing Chief Editor Liu. She suggested that since Chu Xiao had just returned from overseas, 
had outstanding performance at her previous company and some unfinished tasks, it would be fitting for her to take on the responsibility. Chu Xiao looked at her in shock, while everyone else in the room began to agree, not wanting to create any trouble with these influential companies. Chu Xiao thought to herself, Who is this woman named Su Yao? Did I do something to offend her? She seems eager to find faults with me. Editor Liu looked at Chu Xiao and asked if she would be willing to take on the task. With a tired expression, Chu Xiao replied, Eh, uh, okay. I'm willing to try, but I have a few reports to write and some other matters to attend to. Before she could finish, Editor Liu interrupted her, saying, It's nothing. Your bonus will increase if you do well this task. As for the other tasks, just pass them to someone else. Su Yao seems free, so pass them to her. Su Yao looked angry and gave Chu Xiao an annoyed look. Chu Xiao smirked and thanked Su Yao for taking care of her work. In her mind, she thought, Hmm, even though I'm not sure how I've offended you, I must let you know that I'm not someone who can be pushed around. While she maintained her gaze on Su Yao. President Jiang sat in his office, accompanied by his daughter who grew bored waiting for him to finish his work. She pleaded, Daddy, when will you be done? I'm so bored. President Zhang assured her, Daddy will be finished soon. We can go to the park later, all right? Just then, there was a knock on the door and Ruo Wei entered without prior notice. She asked President Zhang if she had disturbed him. Xue Er, President Zhang's daughter, looked at Ruo Wei and thought, Where did this woman come from? Another new woman trying to please Daddy? Meanwhile, Ruo Wei wondered in her mind how Xue Er had suddenly appeared. President Zhang inquired, Why have you come here? Ruo Wei approached him and placed her hand on his shoulder, saying, Cheng Yu, I came to see you. Cheng Yu instructed her to take a seat as he was busy with his work at the moment. Xue Er, without hesitation, declared, Her perfume is too strong. I'm going outside for some fresh air, and walked out of the room. As Xue Er walked through the main hall, she thought to herself, What an abominable woman. She's trying to seduce my daddy. Daddy said he would go to the park with me tonight, but now she's trying to bother him. I must teach her a lesson. Meanwhile, as Chu Xiao passed by, feeling perplexed, she muttered, Where is Bai Ruo Wei? I'm sure she went that way. Xie Er overheard her and glanced at her, thinking, This big sister looks beautiful. Chu Xiao, on the other hand, considered herself useless for being unable to even stalk someone properly. Suddenly, Xue Er decided to call out to Chu Xiao, saying, Sister, you're not from Jiang's group, are you? Chu Xiao was startled by the voice and felt a sense of fear, thinking she had been discovered. However, upon looking at Xue Er, she realized it was just a three-year-old child, and a wave of relief washed over her. She thought to herself, luckily, it's just a kid. It'll be easy to fool her. Xue Er asked Chu Xiao what she was looking for suggesting she was here to sneak snap as she saw camera hanging with Chu Xiao. Hearing this, Chu Xiao was amazed at how clever the child was. Calmly, she replied, Um, no, I'm an employee here. Xue Er saw through her and giggled, saying, Hey, hey, you're lying. First, your clothes are too big for you and don't fit nicely. Obviously, they're not yours. Second, your makeup is smudged. You must have been sweating while stalking someone. Chu Xiao thought to herself as Xue Er stared at her. Even a little girl from Jiang's group is smarter than me. I'm going to fail my mission this time. Xue Er started speaking with laughter, saying, Sister, you're beautiful. A beautiful person can be forgiven for anything she does. Blushing slightly, Chu Xiao bent down and pinched Xue Er's cheeks, saying, Aw, you're so sweet. Confused, Xue Er asked, Sister, is this the first time we've met? Chu Xiao reassured her while patting her head, Of course. Why are you alone out here? Where's your family? Excitedly, Xue Er replied, That's not important. I guess you wouldn't want to go back empty-handed, right? Chu Xiao thought with a smile. Is this kid trying to help me? Xue Er led Chu Xiao to the rooftop, where they had a clear view of President Zhang's office. Chu Xiao became thrilled at the sight and kissed Xue Er's cheeks, saying, Oh, my rubby, you've helped me. I'll buy you an ice cream later. Meanwhile, Ruo Wei was engaged in conversation with President Zhang. She leaned on his desk with her elbow and rested her face on her hand, speaking seductively. President Zhang, are you tired? Would you like something to eat? 
President Jiang replied, No, if there's nothing else, you may leave now. Ruo Wei straightened herself and thought, Hmm, I don't believe he can remain calm. As Ruo Wei's foot got tangled, she fell onto President Jiang. In that moment, Chu Xiao was on the rooftop, capturing photos from a perfect angle of his office. She felt ecstatic, thinking, OMG, the Yao, bonus is mine. However, She Er, thinking to herself, Damn it, that old woman is seducing my daddy. I can't let them be alone in the room, lost her balance and fell. Chu Xiao swiftly grabbed her hand with one hand while holding onto the building with the other. Shue Er expressed her fear, and Chu Xiao reassured her not to worry. She advised Shue Er to hold onto her arm and start climbing up towards the building. Shue Er followed her instructions and safely reached the rooftop. Meanwhile, Chu Xiao remained suspended in the air, holding on with just one hand. Shue Er grew concerned about what to do, but Chu Xiao assured her that she would manage on her own. However, after some time, Chu Xiao's grip slipped, and she fell through the air, thinking, It's over. Is this how I'm going to die?